Look! Oh my. Uh, is that the police? Hmm? Yes. Hey, Johnny. It's Ecoy. You know what? Totally disregard that last voicemail because you obviously have your hands tied. Good luck. I never really liked being the I told you so guy, but I don't think I've ever seen someone speed run finding out faster than this not Somalian kid, because I think I was actually recording my reaction to his little discord tantrum while he was currently or just being released from being arrested. And sadly, although it's the thumbnail and the lead of the story, his run-in with the local authorities is actually the least of his worries right now, as just as the decoy prophecy foretold, if he doesn't stop, something is going to stop him. Now I believe the order of events last night were, he randomly encountered a protest in the street. When the police were involved, he began to antagonize them for his supposed content. Oh my god, we crashing out! But then begins to heckle this female copper. You a bad I swear to God. You a bad I said you to dinner. I swear to God, I swear to God, I'll change your life. I'll change your life, baby. Baby, I'll change your life, I promise you. You a bad Right here. Which goes very badly for him. I'm in the sidewalk. I'm in the sidewalk. I'm in the sidewalk. I'm in the sidewalk. What the f***? As another angle shows him being carried away like a wee little lad. And being stuffed into a bus, all while crying about being an American again. It's my stuff, don't steal my stuff. Okay. What do you steal? steal? I'm from America, I'm in the sidewalk, what did I do? Give me a passport. I will, but calm down. You're recording right now on camera. Give me a passport. I'm you with police brutality. What the, I'm from America, you can't arrest me anyway. Now he luckily is released from custody, but immediately begins calling them homophobic slurs. What the f type of bull is that? You a you a f police, you think I'm scared of these mother Now f you. you you. And I swear if this was on old school cable television, his show synopsis for the pathetic pirate would be, little dude runs around, bothering adults, gets scared when he's finding out, but then acts brave shouting slurs as he flees, while his fans laugh at his fatherless behavior, with episodes like, live streaming until you die screaming. And that description is equal parts sad and accurate, because every movie genre, TV show, or even YouTube niche has a specific formula that they loosely follow, including mine. But after I've covered his nonsense on 7 videos getting 8 million views, it's basically the same story on repeat. And the worst part about it, the damage he receives from each instance gets progressively worse every episode. But unlike movie, TV, or even social media stars, I have yet to see this financially pay off for him. As after his arrest, he was ecstatic about the content he just created. Bro, those guys, show them how they carried me. They carried me like a child. Like four cops grabbed me and carried me like a child to the Holy shit. Uh, you guys heard everything? 1300 on here, I don't know oh, how many on Rumble. Shit. Until later that evening, while eating, he apparently witnessed a mass incident. I'm eating lunch. I'm eating. Bro, I'm eating dinner right now with the mirror. Somebody just came in the restaurant and started everybody. Everybody, bro. Two people just got right next to me. I ran. Now, at the very least, I've been nothing but compassionate for this guy, and even acknowledged that in my own comment section, people call me out for treating him like a kid, not the full-grown adult that he is. And although I began to feel sorry for what he just went through, I then saw him running up on the scene with people laid out on the ground and what appears to be police pushing him away, but he just had to get in there to film his precious content for his channel, so I feel like I can no longer feel sorry for him. Because him being immature in Japan and getting floored for his efforts is one thing, but I legitimately think that all this social media clout chasing has calcified his compassion. Or even seeing his fellow man being ended seemed like just another opportunity for viral content, and when you're that desperate for status, I think you've sold your soul. And his issues didn't even end there, or randomly in the next morning he streamed for a minute because the coppers actually came to his hotel. Gee, bro, this is crazy, my shirt is not even on correctly. I mean, let's do this downstairs. You're gonna get me kicked out of my hotel. You're gonna get me kicked out of my hotel, man. Ask you? What happened yesterday? If you feel good? I don't want to talk about anything. I need to talk to my lawyer. You would don't do it? I'll talk to my lawyer. You go to the hospital? I will talk to my lawyer. You don't want to speak with me? I do not want to speak with you guys. I'll talk to my lawyer. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. You feel good? I want to talk to my lawyer. Okay. Hmm? I'm being harassed. This is the second time. I don't know. 
The second time police is coming to you. Now, I originally thought this cop was the same one that he heckled the night before, but side by side, I actually don't believe that's her. So either the police are onto his antics and just like in Japan have seen the streams and are about to come down on him, or they genuinely wanted to check up on him after he just witnessed a terrible incident last evening, but he's so paranoid over his own wrongdoing that he can't even allow the local authorities to do a simple wellness check on him. And it would be one thing if he was one of those insanely successful live streamers sitting on several seven figure bank accounts, I could somewhat understand why he's enduring this. Because from what I've heard is his fan base appreciates appreciate seeing him struggle, but their appetite can only be satiated by progressively worse situations for him to go through. And it's sad, because it's just like a scene from the 90s, where all the kids bully the littlest loser on the block and pressure him into doing all the stupidest things just so they can laugh at his misery. But then all those losers found each other on a chat room and treat this not Somalian guy like they used to in their friend group. And I say this not to be mean, I say it because it's again, equal parts sad and accurate. So if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on the tragic status of today's reality, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on how they finally found the random attacker in New York City, but he's somehow worse than we ever imagined.